This is the Diatone Roma F5. Do you have this quad? Do you need to know how to set it up? Or maybe you're thinking about getting the quad and you're wondering like, how, how does it come in the box? This is the video for you. I'm about to set this quad up for the very first time. Come along with me, let's do it together. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're gonna learn something today. Well, let's start with some of the easy and obvious things. It comes with a battery pad, so I'm gonna put this battery pad on it. Uh, battery pads, in case, in case this is like your first quad or something, they're super useful because they protect the battery from getting gouged by the screw heads, and they keep the battery from sliding off the top plate and going flying in a crash. Is that right? Are we gonna cover up this beautiful diatone cutout here? Does it go on the front? No, no, it goes on the back. That's a shame. They got this beautiful diatone cutout. We need to install the video transmitter antenna. It's very, very important that you never power up your quad with the video transmitter antenna removed. You'll burn out your video transmitter if you do that. How do you know if it's tight enough? If you can easily rotate the antenna, then it's not tight enough. You want to get it tightened down snug to the point where the antenna does. Oh, no, still. Yeah. So this is a common problem with these TPU, uh, brackets, these TPU holders, is that they're thick enough that you can't get it cinched down to the point where it's actually tight enough. You know, see, it's easily rotating. That means that the pin is not fully engaged with the socket. And I wonder if I tighten these screws down, will it kind of snug up and crush the, crush the TPU just a little bit? Oh, that's an M2. It's a two millimeter driver. Fair enough. Mm. I'll just tighten these screws down a little bit and see if that gives me just enough. Yeah, that's giving me a little more. There we go. Now it doesn't want to rotate. Perfect. Well, as long as I've got my two millimeter driver out, it would be a good idea to go over the entire quad and just check that all the screws are snug. This is a good practice when you first get a quad. A lot of times from the factory, the screws may not be as tight as they ought to be. And you just stinks if they go flying on your first flight. They don't need to be like gorilla tight, right? They don't need to be ultra tight, especially the screws that are going into, if there's any screws that are going into plastic, like the motor screws, they don't need to be like super tight. You don't want to break anything. But, oh yeah, see that one's, that one was, that one had almost a full turn of looseness. And it would be a good idea to do this again after your first couple flights, because just vibration and shock will loosen things up and it'll all settle in over time. Be especially gentle with the 1.5 millimeter screws. They, uh, they are super easy to strip or even just twist the head off if you go crazy with them. They don't need to be ultra tight. And on the back here for the video transmitter, you can see the screw is just going into this nylon nut and there are these little silicone bushings here. Um, that one is never going to get fully tight. It just relies on the friction of the nylon nut to hold it in place. So you don't need to cinch those back ones down. They're not going to get any tighter. I would like to install this GoPro mount. Does it go? Oh, that's, that's super slick. Yeah. Okay. So the, let's do that after I just went and tightened all the screws down and we're going to take them out. Okay. The GoPro mount slides underneath like this and slots in, yeah, and then screws down. The screws that we took out are not going to work because they're not long enough. And Diatone includes a set of spare screws of various sizes. These are all the M3s, and then there's a set of M2s. And I'm just going to have to eyeball what size is right. Seven. I'm going to, it seems like eight millimeter looks about right to me. I love that Diatone includes their spares in clearly marked bags with separated by size. It's got to be a ton of work on the back end. I mean, someone has to just literally put all these screws in the bags. Um, but, oh, we need four of them. And two by eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Interesting. We need four, but we only have two. Well, maybe we're going to use the nines as well. Although Diatone does include spares, it's certainly a good idea to have a 
some boxes of spare screws. Um, I have links to suggested assortments of screws, standoffs, and so forth over on my website, fpvknowitall.com, which has my ultimate FPV shopping list. Um, just got all the stuff you might think about getting, including tools, parts, and, uh, and uh, quadcopters and stuff. Everything, really. Um, so if you don't have like an M3 screw assortment or an M2 screw assortment, you could consider picking one up. There we go. And put one of those other, one of those little four millimeter whatever in here. It just screws right down into here. Great. A diatone includes with the Roma F5 these side plates. Uh, and it's really cool how they can just click into place here against the standoff. You can choose to use these if you want. They're going to help keep dirt out of your uh, stack. If you use turtle mode, for example, and you kick a bunch of dirt up into your stack, um, certainly not mandatory. And you will need to take them off to like get at the get at the uh, USB or anything. But it's pretty clever. The next thing I need to do is install the receiver in the quad. And exactly how I do that is going to depend on what type of receiver I'm using. Now, obviously, you could just get this little pinout diagram for the flight controller. The flight controller is, is not marked with the pad names. It's a little bit annoying, but there's not a lot of room on there. So I guess that's what they've decided to do. Instead, they give you this uh, little diagram. And if you lose it, well, you just have to look it up on the internet. It's not the end of the world. Um, so you could direct solder it, but Diatone ships with this plug pre-installed for the receiver. And it might work for you depending on what type of receiver you've got. So it may be a little difficult for you to read on this, but the plug comes pre-wired with five volts, ground, RX1, and TX1. Uh, and that's gonna work for you if you are using SBUS. In fact, it comes with a plug pre-made for the FreeSky RXSR. And if you have an RXSR, you can literally just plug this into the RXSR, plug this into the plug that's pre-soldered on the, on the quad, and you'll be ready to go. Um, it will also work if you're using Crossfire. Uh, you would use this plug and you would solder to the Crossfire receiver. Make sure you get the TX and the RX wires correct. Remember, TX on the Crossfire receiver goes to RX on the flight controller and vice versa. Um, but you solder that up and you're ready to go. It'll also work if you're using a Spectrum receiver. You would wire to RX1. And it would work if you're using a Spectrum SRXL receiver, which would go to TX1. All of that stuff is going to work with the pre-installed plug. You would just by soldering up this plug the correct way. I guess the one way it wouldn't work is if you wanted to use SmartPort. If you want to use FreeSky SmartPort, then um, you would need to solder the smart port wire to a TX of a different UART. Um, they actually say, so they actually put right here TX5, although nothing is soldered to it. And that's what you would use if you're gonna use FreeSky smart port telemetry, um, which is certainly nice to have if you have FreeSky, but you would not be able to use the pre-soldered plug for that. Well, as you can see, I've now installed a receiver on the quadcopter. I haven't quite taped it into place yet. I just finished soldering up the wires and I've bound it to my controller. The controller that I'm using here is the FreeSky X Lite and the receiver is the FreeSky Archer. And you might be surprised that I'm not using my trusty old Radio Master, which is actually my daily driver radio and a Crossfire receiver, which frankly, that's what I use most of the time. Uh, and the reason for that is I just finished recording a video about these new FreeSky Archer receivers. If you use FreeSky receivers, you got to take a look at these. They come pre-flashed with the Access firmware and they support over-the-air firmware updates. These are two of the biggest pain points when working with FreeSky receivers. If you use FreeSky 2.4 gig, then you got to look at these. I'll put a link to the video uh, that video down in the video description if you want to find out more about that. But don't freak out because the setup steps that I'm going to do are the same for any OpenTX radio. If you're using this, if you're using a, a Radio Master, a Jumper, any of these radios, the steps are going to be the same. In fact, I'll show you. The screens look a little different, but the steps are basically the same. Let's get into it. And I'll start by plugging in the USB to the flight controller. Got it. 
And uh, the first thing I like to do is get my receiver working so I can see my sticks moving and see my switches moving. So we're going to start by going to the ports tab. And for almost everybody, UART1 is going to be the port that you're going to use for your serial receiver. Um, all of the standard diatone plugs that they want you to use will be using UART1. Even if you wire up Crossfire or anything like that, you're going to be using either TX1 or RX1. Those pads and those pads are UART1. That's why they're labeled TX1 and RX1. So we don't need to change that. UART1 Serial RX is correct. We are also using UART5 for smart port telemetry. If you're using a FreeSky receiver like RXSR or like these Archer receivers, that's going to be the thing you're going to do there because the smart port wire was connected to the TX5 pad. Um, if you're using Crossfire or Ghost, you don't need to do any of that. The smart port part, the serial RX you do need. And everything else should be fine on the defaults. We're just going to hit save and reboot. Now you'll notice that when I plugged in USB, the light on the receiver started blinking. And that is a great thing that Diatone did. Many flight controllers force you to plug in a LiPo in order to power the receiver. And that means the whole time you're doing what we're about to do, your LiPo is running down, maybe going dead because you weren't paying attention or your video transmitter is screaming away. By powering the receiver from USB, Diatone has made our life a lot easier. Let's go ahead and turn radio on and when we do that the light on the receiver will go green this is why i haven't installed the receiver in the quad yet because someone should be able to see this stuff and we're just going to set that aside and we're going to look at this controller now let's go to the receiver tab in betaflight and we should see that as i move the sticks on the radio the channels move here that means that our receiver is working um, if that is not true, the next thing you're going to need to do is go to configuration and double check your receiver protocol is correct. So we've got a FreeSky receiver. It's outputting SBUS. The receiver protocol is SBUS. If you have a Spectrum receiver, you're probably going to choose Spectrum 2048. If you have a Spectrum XR SRXL receiver like the 4650, you would choose SRXL2 as your protocol. If you're using Crossfire, you would choose Crossfire. Um, if you're using Immersion RC Ghost, then uh, you would probably choose SRXL2 unless you're using it. It's the future. In the future, you would choose Ghost, but Betaflight doesn't have Ghost in it yet. It's not official anyway. Oh, and if you're using a FlySky receiver, you would choose iBus. So and that would be the next thing you would do if you didn't have movement in the receiver tab. But I do have movement in the receiver tab, so I'm good to go there. One thing you're going to notice, though, is that the movement of the sticks is not correct. Um, when I move the throttle, the roll channel moves. When I move the yaw, yaw is correct. When I move the roll, and the elevator moves. When I move pitch, the throttle moves. So the channel mapping isn't right. And the way we're going to fix that is we're going to go up here, and we're going to rearrange the AETR to be to make our channel mapping correct. Now, there is a preset here that you can choose, and it usually will work. I'm going to choose the Spectrum preset, which is T-A-E-R, and I'm going to hit Save. But what a lot of people don't know is that you can just reorder these letters any which way. You can just type the letters and reorder them any way you need to. You don't have to use one of the presets. Let's see if this preset turned out to be right. Throttle, yaw, roll, pitch. Yes, it turned out to be correct. Very nice. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my endpoints. And what I want to see is that when I move the sticks left and right, the endpoints go 1,000 to 2,000. 1,000 to 2,000. If your endpoints don't go 1,000 to 2,000, I'm going to put a link in the video description to a tutorial I made showing you how to fix that. You definitely want that to be true so that Betaflight knows when you're deflecting the stick all the way or knows how far you're deflecting the stick. Since my endpoints are correctly set, I can now uh, I optimize the stick low threshold. It's set to 1050, and that's uh, got more sort of breathing room than we really need. I'm going to set that to 1010, which is just a little bit above the, the lowest stick value of 1000. And I'm going to hit save. And the next thing I'm going to do is go to the modes tab and take a look at the uh, aux modes there. Aux modes let us do things like arm the quadcopter, like switch it between acro mode and auto level mode. Um, and uh, when you're working with an OpenTX radio, you need to define what all the switches do 
if they're not predefined for you. So here in the radio, I'm going to press the menu key one time, and then I'm going to page to the mixer screen. And we've got these channels here, one, two, three, and four, which are four main control channels. And then we've got channels five, six, seven, eight, and so on. And those are what are called our aux channels or auxiliary channels. So what I like to do is I like to have this upper left switch be arm and disarm. I like to have this right side switch. It's a momentary switch, so it's spring loaded and it resets itself. I like that to be my buzzer or my beeper so I can find the quad. If I like land somewhere and I don't know where I landed, I can just make it beep at me to help me find it or if I crash. And I like to have this front face switch here be um, auto level and what's called turtle mode. Turtle mode, if the quad is crashed upside down, lets you flip it back over again. Um, those are my sort of four, three main control uh, aux modes. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down in the mixes screen and I'm going to highlight channel five. I'm going to click that jog wheel one time. I'm going to go to source. I'm going to click the jog wheel one time. Source is now blinking and I'm going to flip the switch that I want to assign to that channel. And it will fill in there the name of that switch. And then I'm just gonna click the wheel one time and exit out by pressing the exit button. Now I'm gonna do that again for channel six and seven for the remaining two switches. So I'm gonna highlight channel six, click one time, go to source, click one time, flip the switch. The switch is now filled in and hit exit and exit. And then on channel seven, I'll do the same thing. Source, click one time, flip the switch, click one time and exit out. Now that I've created those mixer lines, take a look in the receiver tab and you can see that when I move those switches, aux one is controlled by this switch, aux two is controlled by this switch and aux three is controlled by this switch. So we're now controlling those aux modes with our switches. Now let's tell the flight controller what we want those aux modes or switches to do. We're going to do that by going to the modes tab. And let's start with the arm mode. I'm going to put the arming switch in the arm position. Whether that's pushed away or pulled towards is completely up to you. I prefer to have pulled towards be disarmed and push away be armed. Um, other people do it the other way. Uh, you can just do it. You can pick whichever feels the most comfortable and makes the most sense to you. I'm going to put it in the armed position, which for me is pushed away. I'm going to move this slider over to cover this little yellow tick mark, which shows the current channel position. So if I pull towards, you see the tick mark goes over here. If I push away, the tick mark goes over here. I'm going to put this slider to cover the armed position, and I'm going to hit save. And I can do that also for the beeper. So I'm going to pull the beeper switch. Here's where the tick mark goes. I'm going to move the slider over to cover that position and I'm going to hit save. I'm not sure what happened. Um, when I moved this aux mode, when I moved this switch, it picked up the, you see how that nothing is happening? Put this back to auto and move it again. There we go. It picked up the wrong channel. Don't know why that was, but now that I've um, now you see this switch is controlling this mode. Um, Diatone ships with air mode on a switch. I don't like to do it that way. I'm going to delete this uh, and I'm going to save. And then here I'm going to disable hide unused modes. There are a few more modes I want to set up. Angle mode, I'll hit add range. And I'm going to move this front face switch to the middle position. It's going to pick up aux 3, which is the aux mode that I assigned to that switch. The middle position is going to activate angle mode. And then I also like to have flip crash mode or turtle mode. I'm going to hit add range. I'm going to move that switch and I'm going to move the slider to cover this little yellow tick mark. So when the switch is all the way down, the little yellow tick mark moves into this position. I'm going to move the slider to cover that position and hit save. And now if I hide unused modes again, we can look at the basic functioning of the quad. The arm switch, push away is arm, pull towards is disarm. Angle mode is when this switch is in the middle. Flip crash is when this switch is pulled all the way down. And beeper, beeper is working the opposite of how it should work, doggone it. 
um, you can see that when the deep beeper switch is in its default position, the beeper mode is active. That's not what I want. I don't want it beeping all the time. I'm going to pull that switch so that that is where the beeper needs to be. And I'm going to hit save. Okay, great. Beeper active. Perfect. There are a few other changes that I want to make. Let's go to the configuration tab. We put air mode on a switch. This isn't the time to go into a big detailed uh, tutorial about what air mode is, but suffice it to say, air mode increases the stability of the quadcopter when you lower the throttle all the way down. We're going to enable air mode here in the configuration tab, and that will turn it on all the time. So let's check the function of the video transmitter. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to plug in a battery. Otherwise, the video transmitter won't be powered up. Uh, props are off. Don't have your props on and your battery plugged in when you're working on the bench. Very, very dangerous. Um, I'm going to go to the video transmitter tab here and I can see here on the right side, it says device ready. Yes. That confirms that the video transmitter is talking to the flight controller. And of course you would hope so being a bind and fly, but good to know. Uh, let's change this from fat shark band to race band. That's what you're going to find. Most people are using um, outside, you know, just out in the world. Uh, and we're going to change channel to channel eight. Uh, the reason I like to start with race band eight as my default channel is that Wi-Fi networks can overlap with channels one, two, three, four, five, and I think six, but channels seven and eight, and maybe six of race band are away from the area used by Wi-Fi and can't be interfered with by Wi-Fi. Um, so that's what I always use as my default channel. We're also going to crank the power up to max. I I think it goes up to 400 milliwatts. I'm just going to crank it up to max. Um, and I'm also going to turn low power disarm on until first arm. What this is going to do is when you first power up the quad, the quad is going to be at 25 milliwatts. And that keeps the video transmitter from overheating. Um, if the, if the props are not blowing air, then the video transmitter can overheat. It won't be damaged, but it'll just kind of stop working. And then you, you unplug it and it cools down and it's fine. Um, so if you set this low power disarm to on until first arm, it'll power up at 25 milliwatts. And then when you arm the quad, boop, it'll jump up to 600 milliwatts or whatever max power is, uh, and then stay there. So that's a nice little thing to keep it from overheating on the bench and we'll hit save here. The other thing you might consider doing is change the OSD, the on-screen display in your goggles. Uh, Diatone has shipped this with a perfectly reasonable default OSD. Some people like to have uh, custom settings and so forth. Um, you may find as you fly more that there are things you decide you do or don't need to see. Uh, but for now, we can just leave this at the default. Well, we're nearly ready to go fly, but I didn't think it would be fair to just leave out a step. And that is actually installing the receiver in the quad. Well, I guess technically I didn't show you how to solder up the receiver, but that's going to be a little different for everybody, depending on what kind of receiver you're using. So um, I'm going to wrap it in Kapton tape. Uh, you can use heat, uh, heat shrink if you like. I like Kapton tape because heat shrink, well, maybe you don't have the right size uh, for what you're trying to do. And the other thing is that Kapton tape is clear. You can get clear heat shrink too, I guess, um, which means that you can see the LEDs on the receiver, which is very useful for knowing if you're having any problems, like if it's fail safe or anything. And you can get at the bind button easily. Um, always want to make sure the receiver bind button is accessible. Then I got to figure out where to mount it. And I've kind of screwed myself here because I, I reused the short little wires that Diatone soldered, but those wires were meant to be used with a little extension plug. So I don't actually have any fricking length of wire to use. Um, a simple place to put the receiver would be right up front here. Uh, that would be great. I, I can't reach that. So I think what I'm gonna do is just with some double-sided tape, stick the receiver on top of the flight controller. It's not the best place in the world for it to be, but it's not the end of the world either. The tape that I'm using is Scotch Extreme Mounting Tape. I'm just going to get a little bit of it. And uh, I'm going to put it on the back of the receiver. Make sure you put it on the back of the receiver again so that the LEDs and the bind button remain accessible. And I'm going to just pass this through here.
Yeah, this is going to do fine. Oh, let's keep it away from the Bluetooth antenna. So you can barely see it, but this little squiggly uh, trace here is the Bluetooth antenna. Probably want to keep the receiver further away from that. Let's see if I can squiggle this. I'm just trying not to take the freaking top plate off. I'm being real careful to press on this one processor so that I'm not like knocking off any tiny little capacitors. If you're not sure, just use something blunt or just bite the bullet, take the top off and use your finger. And I'm gonna grab a zip tie. Before I show you what I'm gonna do, I should tell you Diatone's intent is that you'll mount the receiver back here on the video transmitter. In fact, they even give you a little plastic uh, piece to go on top here. Um, and then you could mount the receiver on that. But I just, like I said, I made the wires too short. And their intent is that you would pass the antennas out here through these holes. And there are some little plastic tubes that they give you antenna tubes that you can run the antennas up into. That would be super cool. That's totally what I should have done if I had not made the wires too short. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pass this. Let's see, I'm gonna go front to back and I want this to be facing backwards on the underside of the arm. So it's a little further from the prop if it's on the underside. Yeah, just like that. I'm gonna run this antenna down here and just use a little bit of heat shrink to hold it up against there. That's how I usually mount my antennas and I find it keeps them pretty durable, keeps them out of the props. Even though it seems like that with them being underneath the prop like that, that it would be closer to the props and so more likely to get chopped, but it just isn't. And I'm gonna cut the tip off here, being really careful not to cut the actual antenna, which would make it not work so good. Well, that's gonna do it. All I gotta do now is put the props on and go out and fly. If you're new to quadcopters and you don't know the right way or the wrong way to put props on, yes, there is a wrong way, uh, put a link in the video description down below to a tutorial I made. Props for noobs. Let's not make any assumptions about what you do or don't know. Don't you hate it when people like just assume that something is so obvious that you would know how to do it and then they don't tell you how to do it? That's not how we roll around here. I'll also put in the video description a video about how to do your very first test hover of a new quad. Even though this was made by Diatone and it should be completely perfect and ready to go, the very first time I fly a new quadcopter, I have a couple safety steps that I take to make sure I don't end up uh, posting bloody pictures of myself on the internet and saying, don't do what I did. Link in the video description for the safe way to maiden a quadcopter too. That's gonna do it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching and happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.